USMNT fans, this is Rohan and Jake from One Goal. We are here today with another episode of Around the Box. Today we got five interesting USMNT topics that we're going to go head to head on. We want to hear what else you guys want us to debate with other future guests coming on the show in the upcoming episodes. So let us know in the comments what you want us to debate, what you think we thought uh, that you agree with, that you disagree with, whatever. But today we're going to get started with our first topic. Okay. Which U22 player has the most potential in the USMNT's player pool? For me, without a doubt, it's Caden Clark. When you watch Caden play, he you can't really appreciate it at the MLS level because of what a lot of what he does doesn't show up in an MLS game. And what I mean by that is he does a lot of one touch. He plays way quicker than everyone else on the field. He plays like two, three seconds ahead of everyone else on the field. Well, what takes most people two, three touches to do, he can do in one. So when you see it at the MLS, it just looks like, oh, he's just playing one touch. But that's the kind of stuff that translates to the next level. When you watch him play, I'm 100% confident that he could play on, yeah, top top team in the Champions League, without a doubt. You really think that, you know, he can go, uh, instead of Salzburg, you think the move to Leipzig is, is what suits him better? Yeah, honestly, I think he he's an interesting case in that he's one of those players that will do better with better competition. It's like when he's playing with Salzburg and he's got all this time on the ball and he can touch it and like no one's coming at him, he's not going to shine because what he shines is in like those quick, intricate plays. And when he has space, you can't really exploit that. And that's kind of what you see in MLS. Like if, you, if you're not paying attention, it may seem like he's not doing anything. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. I feel like you know, he scored a sick goal on his debut. Like he, he immediately elevated to the level that professional players need to play at in MLS. So, I mean, I could see that being a part of his confidence to push him to the next level. So yeah, I like that pick, Katie Clark. All right, I, I, you know, I don't know if this is recency bias or, or what, but uh, you know, it has to be Brendan Aronson for me. I mean, he's versatile in a bunch of different attacking positions. He's played on the wing, kind of left midfield. He's played through the middle where he's really kind of uh, shown with his positioning, kind of making late runs into the box. And you saw that in his breakout season in Philly where he was making those late runs and he started to really start scoring um, pretty sweet goals. So he can strike a ball really well um, uh, as well. And you saw that, you know, with the goal that he scored today where he, he just kind of slowed it down made a inch of space for himself and curled it into the far post. He's a very confident player. Um, he's got, you know, that excellent ball carrying ability. And in terms of like the actual formations that he's played in, you know, the Union played in a 4-3-1-2, a very narrow formation in his breakout season. And he was able to combine a lot with the midfielders around him. Um, Salzburg also playing in a 4-2-2-2 with a uh, narrow kind of uh, organization, which is great for him to transition to in, in, in his new club. Um, and honestly, overall, I think he has all the tools for a modern number 10. High pressing, great passing, uh, great shooting. He's an all around player. All right, cool. The most underrated player in the pool, I gotta say, uh, and I know we unfortunately haven't seen much of him, um, but Kobe Hernandez Foster. Uh, he's a really young player. I think, you know, in a position where he plays left back in the USMNT pool, there aren't that many players that stand out. Obviously, Anthony Robinson, um, you know, we, we just saw uh, Sam Fines have some great performances. But Kobe Hernandez Foster is a really exciting player. Um, he's excellent defending 1v1. He's super athletic, has a lot of speed. He has an incredible ability to play these like on the dime, perfect through balls, perfect long balls, kind of unlocking wingers with long balls over the top. He's um, also has a pretty good shot on him as well. And, you know, it, it's really unfortunate that uh, the, the U19 league in Germany has been canceled. So we haven't been able to see him kind of like take the reins and kind of make that exciting progression, which seems like Every young USMNT player is doing these days, just flying into the first team. Um, a little unlucky there, um, but maybe, you know, when things start to get a little bit more normal, um, we'll see him kind of push closer to that starting lineup. 
uh, because I really do think that he has incredible potential. People kind of forgot about him, which is a shame. Um, it shouldn't undermine his incredible ability and talent. His one knock is maybe his height, but you know, as a left back, like you can kind of get around that by using your ability and just having like a low center of gravity. So his athleticism, his speed, his passing ability, I think he's one of the most underrated players in the pool. Yeah, I agree. Um, I don't think he's the most underrated player, but I do think he is underrated. And this Honduras talk that they're trying to recruit him yeah, as we're scared. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we need to do whatever we can to keep him because he's going to be our left back in the future. I'm a big Kobe guy. But for me, the most underrated player in the pool has to be Josh Sargent. You know, and I know it's like everyone's got the shiny, <laughs> everyone's got the shiny me toy with Daryl DK and Matthew Hoppy and everyone. But Josh Sargent is a baller. He's on a terrible team and they his team does not help him by any means, but the guy can do everything. He could be a number 10, he could be a winger, he could be a striker, he could be a false sign. Whatever you need him to be, he can be. And he's just elite at it. He's He's got all of the qualities necessary. He just needs to get in a competent team. Um, there's not a shadow of a doubt that as soon as he gets to a semi-competent team, he's gonna blow up just like Weston McKinney did when he got that Juve move. He's yeah, right now he's just handcuffed by Bremen. They're just terrible. But once he gets to a team, we're going to be, once he gets to a good team, we're going to be reminded of how great he is and all those, yeah, like the glory he made for himself, like in the U17 and U20 World Cup. Uh, Josh Sargent is a baller. So, next topic should Gio Reyna play on the wing or in the midfield? For me, I can't even believe that this is still a question. Like, and that people are like talking about this. It, it, blows my mind because it makes no sense like I, I tweeted about it today like what people need to understand is there's a difference between someone's position and someone's role yes geo's role within the usmnt needs to be a, a central playmaking role but if we put geo in the midfield with our team he doesn't have that central playmaking role his job in the in a, Greg Berhalter's midfield is to press and play defense and win balls back and funnel it to the wingers to then let the wingers play make. So if we force Gio to play in the center of the field, we're taking away his best quality, the ability to create, and we're handcuffing him with defensive work. And that's not what Gio does. I, I mean, he could probably do it, but it's it doesn't make any sense. Like, should Pulisic be a right back? Probably not. That's not we're not going to get the best out of him. Yeah. We need to take away all defensive responsibility from Gio and just let give him the ball and do your thing. So he needs to be on the wing because on the wing, that's ex in Burhalter's system, that's what it is. The positions do not define roles. And uh, so we need to make that distinct yeah. distinction. Yeah. Look, man, you're pretty passionate about this, so I'm not going to argue with you. Uh, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, you know, for all the reasons you mentioned, he's better suited, uh, you know, uh, on the wing where he has that freedom to kind of cut in, you know, play that role um, as, as a playmaker uh, and collect the ball, even like drop deep if he needs to, to, to collect it, uh, just because, you know, Perhalta kind of plays with those two number eights, so there's a little bit of open space for him to create overloads. Um, if he drops a bit deep from the wing. Um, and, you know, honestly, there, there's the midfield is <laughs> so stacked for the U.S. MVP. There's almost like no room to get the best out of out of Gio. And to, again, to all the points you made, be better suited on the wing. Um, of course, we know that he can play that number 10 rule. He's played it for Dortmund. He's so quick on the, you know, receiving the ball, quickly turning, and then playing a progressive pass at the ball. And you see him do that a bunch of times. Uh, and he's just damn good at it. So he can do it, but again, like in Burhalter's system for the USMNT with already crowded midfielders, team number eights, and that kind of midfield come into the, uh, sorry, winger come into the midfield type role, he's gonna suit perfectly out there. So I'm with you on that, man. Yeah, it's I, it, it, it gets me rattled, man, because I see everyone on Twitter just like making these lineup graphics in, it just seems like there's a fundamental misunderstanding and they don't they don't get that that your position is just a starting point and that's not has nothing to do with your role um but i think we're going to see that in march and people will come around to it for the next topic the mls homegrown player to watch in 2021 uh, 
for me, it's got to be Aiden Morris. I mean, he just casually balled out an MLS Cup, right? I mean, who does that, right? He only had, you know, 11 appearances in 2020. Uh, and, you know, in the playoffs, he, he also had some games. But to, to show up at MLS Cup, get an assist, and then just be hungry. Like, you saw it in his play. He was, you know, he only had winning on his mind. He was, you know, he shut down Madero completely you know, playing with another defensive midfielder next to him, he, he was hungry. He was the one who kind of stepped up more. He he was chasing, putting on high press, of, um, you know, on these playmakers on the Seattle team. And he also, again, was able to collect the ball after he, you know, had a great interception and then play it forward. Or when that wasn't an option, settle down, take a deep breath and play a safe pass out to maintain possession. So that shows some solid maturity uh, for a young player. Um, and, you know, as a homegrown, you, you definitely think that's only another asset uh, for MLS overall to make them look good and the USMNT potentially in the future. I mean, the midfield options are sort of boundless and we keep on having new midfielders, you know, burst onto the scene here. Uh, and I, I really think Aiden Morris, can, he should be fully committed to becoming, you know, a first team pick uh, for Columbus as they probably try and mount, you know, a challenge to, to win the title again. Um, I think, you know, they have a very well-rounded team. They've made some pretty good signings as well. And he's going to fit perfectly into that midfield. So for him, it's a huge, huge season to, to become a first-team regular and then potentially even get, uh, you know, a USMNT call-up. Uh, but, yeah, he's, for me, the homegrown to watch in 2021. I, I, that's a good point, and I'm very excited to see more of Aiden Morris, Mike, because he plays a position of need and a role of need. But my concern is just the people ahead of him. It's going to be hard to get on the field over Darlington Nagby and Artur and Zeller Ion. And now they just brought in Perry Kitchen. So that's going to be difficult. And because of that, my homegrown player to watch, without a doubt, is Moses Nyman. This kid is a baller. He could do what Aiden Morris does. He could do what Tyler Adams does, what Weston McKinney does, Eunice Musa, anyone. But I, he can be anything he wants to be. That's how talented he is. He's... Yeah, I think the most talented 17-year-old in the pool. He, He's our Luka Modric. He's going to wow. be amazing. Yeah, and I'm, that's not hyperbole. Like, he literally <laughs> is that talented. I am a Moses Nyman stan to the 10th degree. He, um, yeah, as soon as he go, turns 18 and gets his citizenship, he's off to Europe, and he's going to set the world alight. He could bench any one of our midfielders um, come 2026. Kid is an absolute baller. All right. Can't wait. Nyman hype train. Full steam ahead. Okay. <laughs> so final topic. Should we be worried about Christian Pulisic? So now with Thomas Tuchel taking over, he hasn't been getting as much playing time. He's, you know, Tuchel said that he's maybe better off the bench than he is in a starting role. And he missed last game. Yes, it was because of family concerns, but everyone thought that maybe he just got dropped from the team at first. Mm -hmm. Um which, you know, that's a sign of something bigger. People like are worried about his place within the team. For me, I'm not worried though. He's Christian's world-class. He's, uh, you know, but he is a winger and he's a young winger, which, you know, it's your mercurial when you're just all wingers are, but especially young ones. He's going to have his up and ups and downs, totally normal. And yeah, I'm not, I'm not concerned about it. He's also Tuchel's system. He plays like a three, four, one, two. So there's not really a, place for wingers that's why Tuchel mentioned the false nine thing uh once Pulisic adapts which he will because kid's a baller uh he'll yeah he'll figure it out he'll get a starting spot and he's gonna thrive not worried at all yeah I'm not worried either I mean he's he's someone who knows how to change the game with his pace he adds a new dynamic so I understand why Tuchel says okay off the bench he's a great asset but honestly you know for him to lock down a starting spot, he's going to have to, when he gets the opportunity to, to start a game, just immediately have an impact. And he has the full capability of doing that. So I'm not worried either. Um, I think you make a good point about how, you know, young wingers have their ups and downs before they really kind of find their feet, solidify themselves and show that they can just be consistent threats game in, game out. Um, which is really hard to do. Uh, I, I would say like a lot of teams have multiple wingers for rotational purposes and based off course on the systems that they play. Um, so 
Pulisic, you know, he's he's going to have the ability to come into a Chelsea side, light things up, get past a defender or two, and then put the ball in the back of the net or assist really nicely. He has the full capabilities of being a top winger in the USMNT. Um, injury is, is a major footnote, I would say, and also uh, just consistency. Yeah, but, and the, the injury thing, that's actually kind of a... I mean, this is probably controversial, but like for me, I would prefer him not to play. Uh, I'd wish I him and Tyler Adams, like they don't need to play for their club teams ever again. They could just be bench players indefinitely because I just don't want them to get hurt. I know what they're capable of. I have no doubt they're going to show that with the U.S. So like <laughs> stay healthy. Just yeah, just be healthy. Come international window. That's all I care about. I'm not a Chelsea you gotta, fan. You got to play games though to stay fit and mentally active, performing at the highest levels in the top five. Leagues. Tyler That's Adams does. What you mean, right? That guy is ready at all times. <laughs> oh man, I don't know. I I, I think you'll be fine, but I, I would like to see him kind of lock in a starting spot. You know, sometimes players are good enough for the manager to adjust the system to them. So let's see it. Before I go. I want to do a shameless plug for everything we got at One Goal. Check us out on social media, on Instagram, on Twitter, and check out our weekly USMNT newsletter that we've been running for over two years now. Yeah, that's over a hundred weekly newsletters. Check it out. And if you really love us, we could use your support on Patreon. Links all in the description. Until next time, and remember, let us know what you liked, what could be better, and what you want to hear debated on Around the Box.